So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at RLC circuits. And so RLC circuits are circuits that uh, help to govern charge or help us to understand charge moving around, in this case, what we call a closed circuit. So we're going to only be looking at closed circuits and not open ones. So first, we wanted to find some variables. First, our charge on the circuit is called Q of T. We're going to use Q as our letter for the charge on the circuit. And then we're going to secondly define DQ dt is to get e going to equal Q prime, which is I of T. So I of T is going to be the current on the circuit, right? And it's the derivative of the charge. We're next going to look at the four different kind of forces that will affect how the flow, the flow of the charge on the circuit. These are called voltage drops, okay? And we're going to learn Kirchhoff's uh, law, which will actually help us to, under, to create a differential equation around these voltage drops that will allow us to then solve for either the charge or the current on the circuit. But first we have to understand what these voltage drops actually are. So the first one is called resistance, and we call it R. And what it does is it resists the flow of charge. So what you can think is, is that if the flow of charge is moving into, in, into the circuit, into the closed circuit, resistance is going to slow it down. It's measured in ohms, and it's directly proportional to the current on the circuit. All right. So remember that the current is I, so we're going to write that as Ri. So we'll say delta V, so the change in V, R, and then subscript R, is going to equal R times I, okay? And that's our direct proportionality. The second one is called a capacitor. We call those C, and they store the charge, and they, so they act as a drop in voltage again. They're measured in farads, and they're going to be inversely proportional to the charge on the circuit, okay? So again, now this is going to be on the charge, so we're going to call this delta V C, and that'll equal 1 over C times Q. The next one is going to be called inductance. We call that L. And it also opposes the flow of charge. It's going to be measured in Henry's, and it's going to be directly proportional to the derivative of the current. So what it's going to look like is, it's going to be delta VL, and that'll equal L times DI DT. Or another way to write that is L times I prime. So those are our three kinds of what we call you know, resistance or, or the things that are going to be opposing current. We can also have something called an electromagnetic force called an E of T, which is going to generally add voltage to a circuit. And that's going to come in two, alternating, uh, in two different flavors. We'll have E of T equals E naught cosine omega T. And what you'll notice here is this is going to alternate between negative E naught and positive E naught. And hence why we call it alternating current. Then we'll also have ones called direct current, and this one's a bit simpler. It's going to simply be E of T equals E naught, and so we get that direct ch charge of uh, direct voltage flow of just E naught into the circuit. We'll use this information now in order to actually generate our differential equation. So the first thing that we, that we need is we need something called Kirchhoff's second law. And so what this states is, is that the sum of the voltage drops around a closed circuit is going to end up equaling zero. So when we think about Kirchhoff's second law and we think about it, what it means for creating our differential equation, we're going to treat each one of our um, oppositional forces, the resistance, the inductance, and the capacitance, as if they're positive, and then the EMF, we're going to treat that as if it's negative. So basically, we've got a resistance plus, uh, minus the, the charge that we're putting in, and that's going to end up equaling zero. So we've got delta VR plus delta VC plus delta VL minus E of T will end up equaling zero. And that's what Kirchhoff's law tells us. So what we need to do is we need to actually input back in those relationships between the charge and the current back into uh, this equation to give us our differential equation. So we're going to get I times R plus 1 over C times Q plus L times I prime minus E of T will end up equaling 0. We'll pull the E of T over to the other side and what we'll get is we get IR plus 1 over C Q plus L I prime equals E of T. Now, what I want to remember here is that uh, Q prime is going to equal I, and so that means that Q double prime 
is going to equal i i prime okay so basically if we take the derivative of q we're going to get i and if we take the second derivative of i we're going to end up get or of q we'll get i prime so we're going to substitute back in there and that's going to give me now q prime plus 1 over c q plus l q double prime equals e of t now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange this, put it in a general order, and then I'm going to actually remove the uh, value in front of the Q double prime to make this kind of a generalized form of the differential equation. So this is going to give me then L Q double prime plus, excuse me, this is R Q prime plus R Q prime plus one over C Q equals E of T. If we go through and divide through by L, we end up with Q double prime plus R over L Q prime plus one over C L Q equals one over L E of T. And so what this is, this is called an RLC circuit. This is an RLC circuit. And it's called an RLC circuit because it has resistance it has inductance and it has capacitance and we kind of basically put those put them in that order the um, well actually the L would come first so RLC circuit redus, uh, resistance inductance and capacitance now what you'll notice here is, is that this is going to be second order linear so it's a second order linear differential equation and in addition to that what we get also is we get that um, the values in front of Q double prime, Q prime, and Q, not only are there the um, uh, functions of X only, or functions of T only in this case, what they also are is they end up being constant, and that's gonna end up being very important. But for right now, what we wanna notice is that we actually have a second order differential equation, and at this moment, right, we're only gonna take a look at our first order differential equations. Okay, so what we're going to need to do in order to look at those first order differential equations is we're going to have to actually remove some of, uh, remove one of the variables. Because we don't have uh, a way to work with second order differential equations yet, what we're going to look at is we're instead going to be looking at some special cases. So the first one we're going to look at is called an RC circuit, and this is one that has no L or it has no inductance on the circuit. So what we're going to do here is let's look at the original D. So we had L. Remember we had L di dt, or Li prime, plus Ri, plus 1 over C Q equals E of T. Now, since we have no inductance, we don't want to think of it as a zero inductance, just think of it as no inductance. What we're going to get is instead we're going to, this piece right here is going to go away. Okay, so we end up removing that because we have no inductance on the circuit. So we end up with Ri plus one over C Q equals E of T. Now what I wanna do is I wanna actually transform this into a single um, single variable. So this is gonna be R Q prime plus one over C Q equal to E of T. And then divide through by R. So I get Q prime plus one over R C Q equals E of T. So now, this is first order linear and we can actually use the integrating factor in order to solve. Given the best case, let's take a look at an example. So now let's determine the general charge on the circuit with a resistance of 1 8 ohms, a capacitance of 2 farads, and an EMF of E of T equal to cosine 4T. Okay, so what we had is we had our function, or our differential equation, excuse me, is Q prime plus 1 over RC Q equals 1 over R E of T. So this is going to then give me, when I plug in my values for R and C, I get Q prime plus 1 over 1 eighth times 2. Q equals 1 over 1 eighth E of T, or in this case not E of T, but cosine 4T. So this is going to give me Q prime plus and this will end up being 4q equals 8 cosine 4t. So now what I want to do is I want to actually recognize that this is first order linear, so I'm going to use my integrating factor in order to do that. Notice that my, uh, 
that function here, p of p of t, excuse me, is going to equal four. So i of t, my integrating factor, is going to equal e to the integral of four dt, and so that's going to equal e to the four t. I'll multiply everything through by e to the four t, so I get e to the four t q prime plus four e to the four t q equals 8e to the 4t cosine 4t. We want to notice here that this part right over here, the left-hand side, is actually equal to the derivative of e to the 4t q. So it's the derivative of e to the 4t q actually utilizing the chain rule. And that'll equal 8e to the 4t cosine 4t. So now I have something that actually I can go out and integrate. So I'll integrate both sides. I integrate, I get the integral of e to the 4t q prime dt is equal to the integral of 8e to the 4t cosine 4t dt. And when I do the integration for both sides, on the left hand side I simply get e to the 4t q and the right hand side will end up giving me e to the 4t sine 4t plus e to the 4t cosine 4t plus c. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up uh, dividing through. And, and in order to do this, we utilized uh, integration by parts. I'm not going to go through that all here right now. I'll divide through by e to the 4t. So I end up with q is going to equal, and this is going to end up being sine 4t plus cosine 4t plus c e to the negative 4t. We'll call that c1. And that is my general solution. So what you'll notice is that all we did in order to solve uh, for the charge on this, um, on this circuit is we went in, we plugged in the values for our resistance and our capacitance, and then we utilized our integrating factor in order to find the solution of the differential equation. The next kind of, or the second kind of circuit that we're going to look at, the special case, is going to be called the RL circuit, and this is one in which there is no capacitance. So let's go back to our original function, and what we had here now is we had L I prime plus R I plus 1 over C Q equals E of T. So once again, that's our RLC circuit, or its general form. In this case, there's going to be, this term is going to go away. We're going to have no capacitance. And so consequently, we're just left with Li prime plus Ri, okay? So I'll take that, I'll divide through by L, and that'll give me I prime plus R over Li equals one over L E of T. And that is the RL circuit, or the differential equation for the RL circuit, okay? Once I have that, then it's just a matter of noticing that this is, in fact, also a first-order linear. All right. So it's a first-order linear, but be careful, it's the first-order linear for the current, not the charge. So what we're going to have to do is, at the end of this process, once we found the current, we're going to have to take the integral of the current in order to find the charge. That's like the last step inside of this entire process. Okay. So let's consider the next example. So consider the direct RL circuit where R equals 6 ohms and L equals 0.2 Henry's with an EMF of 60 volts. What is the charge Q on the circuit? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our differential equation. We've got I prime plus R over L I equals 1 over L E of T. Okay. Then we're going to plug everything in. What we end up with is we end up with I prime plus, and this will be uh, 6 over 0.2 i equals 1 over 0.2 e of t. So this then is going to be then, we can rewrite this as i prime plus 30i equals 5 e of t, or 5, in this case, 5 times 60. 5 times 60, which is 300. Now what you'll notice is that this is first order. Okay, because we've got the i prime plus 30i and then 300. They're all functions of x only. 
So what we'll do is we'll find our integrating factor. We've got P of T is gonna equal 30. So I of T is gonna equal E to the integral of 30 dt, which is equal to e to the 30t. We'll multiply through everything through by that. And what we're going to get on the right hand side is we're going to get e to the 30t i prime equals 300 e to the 30t. Then we'll integrate both sides. So we'll take the integral of the left hand side. So that it's going to be the integral of e to the 30t i prime dt equals the integral of 300 e to the 30t dt. And so this then gives me e to the 30t i equals 300 times 30 e to the 30t plus c1. So that will then give me I, so I divide through by e to the 30t, that's going to equal I equals this is, um, 9,000 e, or excuse me, 9,000 plus C1 e to the negative 30t. Now that's our current. In order to find our charge, what we're going to need to do is to take the integral. So we'll take the integral and we integrate I with respect to t, and that's going to equal the integral of 9,000 plus c1e to the negative 30t. And so consequently, we'll get i equals 9,000t plus, or rather minus, 30 c1e to the negative 30t plus c2. And that's, excuse me, that's not I, but that's rather, that's Q. That's my charge. So we took the integral of I, and remember that I is the derivative of Q. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, that tells me that its integral is going to end up being Q. And on the second side, we're going to get 9,000T minus 30C1E to the negative 30T plus C2. Okay? Now notice, when we have the charge, we're going to end up having these two, right, constants. And that's because... I prime of T is actually equal to Q double prime of T. So what we've done here is we've actually technically solved the second order differential equation. So since it's second order, we're going to end up having two solutions. Or two, what we call two independent, independent solutions. Right? For I, we'd only have the one corresponding to that C1. For uh, Q, we're going to end up having two. So this completes the, our lecture on circuits or RLC circuits. What you want to do is you want to recognize that when we're working with RLC circuits that we're working with first order linear differential equations. So the methods that we use for them are first order linear differential equations, right? And that's going to kind of help us to understand what it is that we're doing with these circuits. Um, after that, it's just a matter of plugging in the values for each one uh, and utilizing that differential equation correctly. All right, so this completes the lesson.